I think it's time for a video with the suburban noises and all and a glass of red wine. Um, time for a video for me to tell you about this Revox A740 stereo power amplifier that was built in the mid to late 70s in Switzerland by the Willi Studer company. But this is no, no ordinary um, Revox A740. This amplifier was saved from going to a scrap metal dealer. Um, when I first learned about this amplifier, <coughs> it's, uh, the, the amplifier channel uh, modules were uh, loose from the chassis, um, the power supply and protection PC board assembly was loose. Uh, there was a lot of wires that was cut off. But so, I, so I told the, the owner of the amplifier, the, the new owner, um, and a good friend of mine, to get the amplifier for, for me to see if we can uh, breathe life into it. Little did I, did I know that it would be um, quite an undertaking, but it's been an adventurous one. When the, when the amplifier arrived at, at my place, I uh, had to find that the primary wires of the mains transformer were all cut off about an inch or two inches from the voltage selector for some odd reason. But I've made a deduction why that uh, possibly why that was possibly done. Um, I did a very quick connection on the on the mains transformer to see if we can get some form of life out of it and surely we did by slowly bringing it up with the Variac um, I could establish that we have AC voltages on all the secondaries. So then then the investigation started uh, why the amplifier was in such a state. Um, now, I must say that if you don't have access to the service manual for this amplifier, um, you will find it fairly difficult to carry out any fault finding or repair on it because it's quite an elaborate and sophisticated amplifier for its time and, and still uh, in, t in view of t today's standards. But an interesting thing and a very typical thing from equipment from the 70s and 80s that they have done, which I suspect is where uh, all of the trouble started for this specific amplifier and why it ended up nearly going to the scrap heap was the pre-driver power supply section that sits over here. I've got a, a two big um, series pass transistors up here, and then obviously the uh, associated circuitry with with those transistors. This does uh, puts out around about sixty five volts uh, plus and minus for the driver sections of of the amplifier channels. Uh, and classic, classic, uh, proper um, power amplifier style. It's beautifully regulated, and um, you know it keeps the voltage uh, beautifully in in, uh, in check. And it's even adjustable. You've got two potentiometers there to get it spot on for, you know, for reasons uh, DC offset reasons and and so forth. But an interesting thing is, these are two positive rail regulators. It's not a negative and a positive complementary system. It's two positives. You've got two independent primary windings that feeds two independent uh, bridge rectifiers. There's your protection fuses from, from, the, um, from the secondaries, sorry, secondaries, not primaries. <clears throat> um, so it's two positive regulators. And how do you get 
a negative rail by simply connecting the positive output of this regulator to ground and then using its negative rail to get your minus 65 volts DC. But an interesting thing how they've done it in this amplifier, I th it might be due to um, uh, ground loop issues or, or some way to just control what the ground current is doing, is that the grounding of these regulators happen on the amplifier channels. It doesn't happen here. There isn't a master ground connection from this connector to the, the ground bus over there. It happens through the, the, the ground, the master ground connections uh, th through those terminals on the back of the amplifier to the ground bus. And I suspect that when, because uh, the, the, the fault then, I, I found that the fault was that the negative rail this regulator was down, was dead. <clears throat> Transistors that, that, that failed. And I suspect the, the tech or the person who attempted to repair this amplifier, that when he uh, had this board on its own on the bench and attempted to fault find this section, he never got a negative rail on on the on the negative section, and that might have led him to remove the power transformer to investigate if it might not have been a center tap that was broken off, or uh, you know some wiring issue in the in the mains transformer. That is my forensic uh, forensic summary of what what has gone gone on here. Because at first I was also stumped that I could not get a negative reading until I had a good look at the schematic and the service manual. Right, so when, when that was sorted out, I then proceeded to test the, the uh, amplifier modules removed from the chassis using my bench power supply to just carefully bring them up uh, slowly to around about 12 volts per rail and injecting a, a signal from the signal generator into the signal input and then taking the readings with the oscilloscope and uh, to my absolute delight I found that both channels were in, indeed working. So that ki really kicked off the project then. <clears throat> um, after replacing all the capacitors on, on the pre-driver regulator board and protection circuitry, I proceeded to replace all the capacitors on, on the main amplifier channels and the meter driver card. It's got a very elaborate and very interesting inverting meter driver card where <clears throat> you'll notice that the meters are in zero position when the amplifier is off. The moment you turn the amplifier on, the meters park in in the most left-hand side of the scale, and then uh, they work their way. It's got magnificent ballistics. These meters. Uh, it's it's one of the most elegant uh, um, analog meters on any amplifier that I've ever seen. They've got a wonderful movement to them. So yes, I, I then proceeded to to replace the capacitors, all the capacitors except the big boys at the back, they seem to be fine and uh, as any technician would know that they, uh, it becomes quite expensive to replace those because specifically because these are mounted on a rail bus system, you can't replace them with uh, PC board type uh, capacitors unless you do an elaborate uh, custom PC board to take those and to fit them in, in that space in the amplifier. But uh, yes, <clears throat> then another thing, the, the top cover was missing. So from looking from pictures uh, on, on the internet, I, I managed to uh, draw this up in Fusion 360, a replacement lid with all the necessary cutouts to just beautifully fit, fit in the amplifier like the original would have. 
and um, get it as close as possible to to the color, the original color. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a tight fit, but there we go. So it sits nicely. Um, and I've installed uh, LEDs uh, in in the in the VUs. I'll turn this on in a moment. I uh, don't want to just turn it on for for no uh, real reason whatsoever. But then there was other issues that cropped up um, when when I started testing the amplifier, and that was some transistors failing, uh, failing due to age. I don't have one of those transistors here by me now, but the one channel exhibited tremendous amounts of noise, and I had to discover that uh, that was due to the oxidization of uh, the transistor uh, leads running into the package where the oxidization crept past the emetic seal uh, into the transistor die and uh, obviously causing a lot of trouble. Um, just another thing on the, on the back side, I've replaced the 2-pin Revox connector that you'll find on the Revox A77 and B77 and PR99. I've just drop in replaced it with a regular IEC uh, power receptacle which makes things much more easy to connect this amplifier to uh, in any system and then uh, yeah it's got a decent set of binding posts original binding posts on it uh, RCA inputs and XLR inputs they're not balanced inputs they merely have the pin 3 shorted to pin 1 so it's, it's a um, single ended input uh, but with the convenience of being XLR uh, which is a very robust way of uh, connecting audio signals as we all know. Also these side panels there was only one left um, so I had a, a, an identical set made that fits over the transistors and yeah this is a magnificent amplifier it's got true stepped attenuators on its uh, level potentiometers um, with a uh, around about a 20 27 decibel um, range so you can't kill the signal completely but it gives you opportunity to control the signal very well you can plug in headphones it's got speakers a and b and um, yeah this has been um, this has been a fun fun project it's also been uh, frustrating at times uh, to find uh, to find some of the faults but w with absolute diligence uh, it, it's it's possible to find the fault the cause of the problem and also of course once again if you have the service data for this amplifier it makes it so much easier or for any amplifier for that matter um, I'm due now to do uh, a sweep on the audio precision analyzer to just verify that its channels match and that it's capable of doing its 100 watts per channel and um, <clears throat> What else is there? Yeah, harmonic distortion measurements and uh, then also just playing it for an hour, two, three, four hours in the background uh, just to make sure that it behaves. Because um, with the last f failure of, of those two transistors in the input section of, of the right channel, it played for a good deal of four to five hours without any problems and it just all of a sudden started to make um, one heck of a racket on on the speakers uh, luckily I was uh, near to it to just turn it off very quickly and uh, also then I was ex extremely glad to have discovered that it was just too small uh, a PNP an MP and uh, small signal transistors in the input preamplifier boards that follow, uh, you know, that precedes the, the power stages. Um, yeah, this is um, 
a wonderful relic from the past. It is a magnificent amplifier. It is not only mechanically very well thought out, uh, mechanically these are solid uh, die, die cast, alloy castings for heat sinks, um, made very robust, beautiful logic, logical layout, beautiful, like I said, beautiful meters on the front. Um, it weighs a ton, it's heavy. And it's, it's uh, the, the utilization of every nook and cranny in the chassis is just marvelous. Um, apart from the mechanics that's wonderful in this amplifier, it's also a wonderful sounding amplifier. It's neutral without sounding, ever sounding dead or clinical. Uh, it's got ample current reserve. It's uh, got a wonderfully uh, wonderful frequency response, you know, just beautifully linear without drawing attention to itself. And um, it's worthwhile saving. That's, that's why I took it upon myself to do this. Because if this amplifier didn't have any merit uh, whatsoever, uh, I wouldn't have looked at it twice. And um, that's that's the story of this Revox A740 uh, stereo power amplifier. It was saved from from being recycled by a scrap metal dealer. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Thank you for watching and uh, cheers. <laughs>